Well, here we are with the finished shot put cannon. Um, I have to apologize. You know, I was making a series of videos uh, showing how I actually constructed the cannon. Um, I had about 45 minutes or so of, of footage showing the entire construction process, and I lost most of it. So uh, basically I'll try to go through what I did to complete the cannon. Um, at least I still have most of my construction of the valve here, which is the most important part anyway. All right. As we can see back here, I have a one inch uh, modified uh, solenoid valve. This is uh, an Orbit brand uh, uh, sprinkler valve that's solenoid powered. Um, I've modified it to, to be uh, pneumatically actuated. Um, if you want to learn how to do that, there's lots of videos on YouTube. Uh, just type in, you know, modifying a sprinkler valve or something along those lines. So my trigger, right here, basically what that does is, when I pull that, when I pull this trigger, it releases the air above the diaphragm and the diaphragm valve. That opens the diaphragm, releases the air from behind the piston allowing the piston to fire back and then air comes through the tank and out the barrel. So right here I have my, my fill valve with a, with a quick connect going into a regulator so I can regulate it to whatever pressure I would like. And then it's just a common T right here so I use the same, the same hole to fill it and uh, release the air. If I want to do multiple shots firing over and over again uh, I can just leave this on, so it will keep refilling after every shot. But that's not really a not really good idea because you shouldn't load this when there's any air in the tank anyway. Because if there is any type of leak anywhere in the system, if there's a leak here, any or anywhere through here, it will fire. The what what actuates the big piston valve in here is losing air behind the valve. You know, it causes a differential in pressure behind the piston to what is in front of the piston causing it to fly back and open up the barrel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dismantle the back of this and come back and show you how I ended up constructing the piston. So right here I have the inside of the uh, Schedule 80 cap that fills the end of the barrel. Right here I have a uh, one of my four inch training balls that I've drilled a hole through so the air can pass through it easily without blowing it out. This axe is a, is a very hard shock absorber for the piston to fly back and hit this. These are very, 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 very tough plastic here so that it absorbs a lot of impact really well. And I also wanted to mention uh, my little, I guess called a suppressor right here. Um, this is where the air actually comes out of the, of the actual uh, solenoid valve. And when that happens, if you're familiar with these types of valves, it makes an incredible hissing sound. And it's really hard on your ears, especially if you're standing on that side. So this little suppressor I just screwed in here, drilled some holes in it, and that limits the, the loud hissing noise. And plus it looks kind of neat. Now, right here, I have one of my soft training balls, as you can see. Stick my finger in it, pull it out, and that's what the, the valve looks like from the inside. So you can see we have a two and a half inch outlet running all the way down the barrel. And it's probably probably pretty hard to see from the angle, but down below, uh, down below, down in here, is you know, leads to the to the air chamber. Uh, you might look at that and think there's not enough room for that for all that air to to run through there, like it might be limiting it or something. But really all you all you need uh, around the uh, I guess circumference of your around the circumference of your uh, you know outlet diameter you only need about an extra quarter inch and I have almost an inch all the way around that so there's plenty of room for for that air to come out it's not inhibited in any way and the same goes for the piston you know coming back away from the barrel you only need about a quarter inch uh, I have mine set to go back about a half an inch just to be safe now the piston itself it's Pretty, pretty simple design. This is just a, a three inch uh, coupler. It's not a schedule 40 coupler. Uh, it's just a drain, you know, a drain waste vent coupler. As you can see right here, I've sanded off the little uh, bumps that stick out on the side. So this thing will go in here and slide 
you know, fairly freely, but there's also not, not an incredible amount of wiggle room in there. And oops, just right here, you can see my, my ball in the back just popped off. You can see it's kind of oddly shaped now because I've forced it in there. This is, a, like I said, a softer ball, and it's, it acts as a really good shock absorber for that piston to fly back. Now, see if I can get this out of here without the wall. Now, originally, what I had in here was I had a metal plate up against the uh, the stopper on the inside of this coupler with a spacer in it. You can see I've got a hole right here and a hole right there. Uh, I was using, you know, a system of rubber uh, made of truck inner tube rubber in there that would, you know, allow this thing to slide up and seal against the barrel. But the problem is when you're pushing a four inch piston with about 120 pounds of pressure um, it'll cut into that rubber. You need a very very hard material because you know there you know at any given point in time there could be 700 pounds of force pushing on this thing. So what I came up with is you can see the burnt edges around here. This is just hot glue. Uh, it's probably about an inch thick about an inch thick of hot glue. Um, I use a, a little bit of hot glue in some of my other projects, so I had a lot of it laying around on hand. And all I did was uh, I just squirted a bunch in there. And after I got sick of you know waiting for the hot glue gun to to stay hot and reheat after you know working that much glue through it, I just started cutting it up with scissors, laying it in there, and and hitting it with the torch, and just heating the stuff up. Uh, the nice nice thing about hot glue is when you put this thing flat on a flat surface the hot glue will level itself, so you don't have to worry about leveling this or anything. As you can see, there's a little bit of a ring around here. Um, so this actually pushes up against the, against the inside of here on that flat, that flat factory surface we've got, and there's really very little need for uh, leveling this. Um, it, I mean, it's, it's hard, but it, you know, it, is, it does have some give to it, so it pretty much levels itself out and seals very, very well. The only problem is, on a very, very hot day, um, you'll actually, it'll actually embed itself on there. So from time to time, you might have to rip it off, and all you do is heat it up with the torch again, and it's leveled itself out. So if you do this, you could probably never, ever have to build a new piston, um, especially if you use metal in the back right here, because that's, that's not going to break. And also, in front of that metal, on the other side, there is another spacer that is, that is glued in there holding it in. Um, yeah, now we can look at the whole the whole cannon. Uh, the wood frame that I built is pretty much just scrap lumber. Um, I did build it with a bias of weight towards uh, towards the the front. So when it does, I mean, because the barrel is above the is above the pivot point where it where it tilts. As you can see, it you know tilts like this. Because the barrel is above it, it is going to cause it to want to hop up. So I put more weight in the front. And also, uh, if, I, if I'm standing behind it and holding the end up and shooting it, you know, if I were to screw up or, or do something wrong, its given position will be to fall back down, not to, not to fall upwards. So that just makes it a little bit safer. Now if I want to permanently adjust the, the height of the cannon, I have this webbing winch on here. I actually use these same webbing winches on the roof rack on my Jeep, but all I do is tighten this, and it'll pull the it'll pull the piston or pull the the cannon up in the air. So I can uh, I can achieve about a 45 degree angle with this if I want to. So whatever I set this uh, strap at, it falls back into that into that position. So when I'm when I'm doing my testing with shot puts into that's the remains of my, my brick wall right there. Not much left of it. But when I'm doing my testing, it'll always fall back into its original position. Um, you can see right here, I just, that's more cosmetic than anything. The little, you know, fake muzzle brake on here and my, uh, here's my, my sight, which is just a, one of my stainless uh, rings that I use in my weights. I just welded it to a, to a piece of bar and clamped it on there. Um, it has actually bent itself slightly because of the weight of it and the actual recoil of the cannon. You know, even this thing, even though this thing weighs about 250 pounds, the the recoil is still fairly great. Uh, shooting my tungsten, my tungsten shot, this thing will kick back, you know, about five or six feet, uh, especially since I have the the wheels on it. Um, aside from ease of 
you know, you know or portability, you might say. Uh, aside from that, I have the wheels on there because when this thing kicks back, I don't want to break the, the PVC pipe. Um, and also, you can see this, I've got this strap back here, which is kind of loose now because it's, it's just screwed on. Um, this whole barrel and everything is free floating in the wood. This thing, whole thing will slide back in here a little bit. I didn't want to make it extremely tight um, because you know PVC is somewhat brittle. So I wanted there to be as much give as I possibly could. So the only thing holding this this pipe to the barrel is I have these great big large you know zip ties that really aren't even that tight. Um, and it seemed to work pretty well. I'm probably going to replace them with uh, some metal with some metal ties just to. To make sure the thing doesn't fall apart but, but yeah that's pretty much it this is the the shot put cannon it is not for sale <laughs> um, possibly a smaller version of it uh, might be if anybody's interested but yep it's been a pretty fun project it's a fun way to promote the business and if you're ever in the area feel free to come on out and i'll give you a demonstration thanks for watching